Hi, I'm Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to discover everything we need to know about point color in Adobe Camera Raw. To understand how point color works and how it differs from the color mixer, we'll start by learning the basics using these swatches. Then we'll apply what we've learned to some photographs. Let's say that I want to adjust the light red swatches differently from the dark red swatches. Well, if I use color mixer, all of the swatches change, regardless of their luminance or saturation values. And that's because Color Mixer selects color based on only one dimension, hue. In contrast, the new point color allows the selection of color in three dimensions, hue, saturation, and luminance for full 3D color editing. To select a color, we'll use the point color eyedropper. Now before sampling a color, the color fields, the two rectangles below the eyedropper, preview the color below the cursor. But as soon as I click on this light red swatch, the color fields display the selected color and the range of adjustments that can be made to that color. A color swatch is also added to the right of the eyedropper tool and a color bar is added below the color fields. The hue and saturation can be adjusted in the larger color field while the luminance can be shifted using the smaller rectangle. All three dimensions can also be shifted using the shift sliders below the color fields. As adjustments are made to the color, the small indicator shows the original color, while the large circle displays the adjusted color. The color swatch, as well as the color bar below the colored fields, also displays the selected color and the adjusted color. Once the lighter reds are adjusted, I can then use the eyedropper to select a darker red value and make adjustments with little to no effect on the lighter reds. Point Color can also customize the range of colors that are adjusted, whereas with Color Mixer, the ranges are predefined. For example, if I use Color Mixer to adjust the greens, Color Mixer defines what colors are within the green range. Even if I select the Targeted Adjustment tool, and the Color Mixer selects two color ranges, the color ranges are predefined by the Color Mixer. I can't expand or contract the range of colors that the Color Mixer defines as green. But if I select point color and select a green and make some adjustments, I can then limit the range of green colors that are adjusted by moving the range slider towards zero or increase the range of colors that are affected by moving the slider towards 100. As we drag, we can also see a visual representation of the colors that will be affected in the color field. Because point color adjustments can be subtle, I think it's much easier to see the range of colors that will be adjusted when we enable the range overlay. Now the colors that will be changed remain in color and the others are displayed as grayscale. For even more granular control, we can use the individual range sliders. The rectangles represent the range of hue, saturation, and luminance values that will be fully affected by any adjustments. By default, the rectangles are centered over the original sample color, which is represented by the dot. But we can drag the rectangle to reposition the range, or drag the edge of the rectangle to expand or contract the range. We can also drag the tick marks to increase or decrease the fade range. The fade range determines the distance between values that are fully affected and those that are not affected at all. So for example, to narrow the hue range of the greens that are affected, I can decrease the width of the rectangle and decrease the fade range as well as use the range slider. All right, I'll uncheck the range overlay and we can see that the adjustments that I'm making are now limited to a much narrower range of green. If we ever need to reset a range slider, we can simply double click within the slider. In some instances, even with the range options, it might be easier to apply point color to a portion of an image using masking. Here we have three blue color swatches that are all very close in hue, saturation, and luminosity. I'll select masking, then select object, and drag to select the middle shape. The red mask overlay appears over the blue rectangle and pink star, but I only want to make changes to the blue color, so I'll use point color, and we can see that all of the same options are available in masking as they are when we are making global edits. Then I'll disable the overlay, I'll select the point color eyedropper, and then select the blue color. This way, I can make my edits to only the single blue shape and we can create as many masks as needed to change as many colors as we want in different areas of our image. 
Another great reason to use point color is to bring similar colors closer to one another and then add additional samples to shift the colors together. In this example, I want to change the color of the circle to match the rectangle and then shift both of those colors. So first I'll select the color of the center circle, but because the color of the circle and the color of the rectangle are so similar to one another, when I make an adjustment, they both change. So I'll reduce the hue range by reducing the size of the rectangle and decrease the fade ranges on either side. Now I can adjust the sampled color within the circle without adjusting the color in the rectangle. Now that both colors match, I can add a second point color sample and make adjustments to all of the similar colors. If I ever want to remove a color sample, I can right click or control click on Mac on a swatch and choose Delete Swatch or Delete All Swatches. Excellent, let's see how we can apply point color to a photograph. In this first image, I would like to remove the cyan from the shadows on the top of the ice without affecting the similar blue colors below the water. But if I use the color mixer, we can see that both colors are being affected by the blue slider. So for more control, I'll use the point color eyedropper to select the cyan in the top area of the ice. Then I'll enable the range overlay, and we can see that the cyan in the top of the ice will be adjusted, but so will some of the ice that's underwater. So to limit the range of colors, I'll narrow the hue range, and I'll adjust the luminance range. Then we can disable the preview, and when I adjust the saturation, we can see that I'm limiting the range of colors that are adjusted to the cyan on top of the ice. We can use the eye icon to toggle the view of the photograph without the point color changes and with the changes. In the second image, I want to remove the red undertones from my skin to make the skin more uniform and then adjust the overall skin tone. I'll click Masking and then choose Person 1 and I want to select both the facial and body skin, and then I'll create the mask. We can disable the mask overlay, and then use the eyedropper to select the red on my nose. Then I'll enable range overlay, so that I can see the exact values that I'll be adjusting. Now before making any adjustments, I'll narrow the hue range, so that we don't affect the yellows as much. I'll move the saturation range all the way to the right, and the luminance range to the left. Then I'll disable the range overview. And now we can adjust the hue shift slider and lower the saturation a bit and adjust the luminance. Now that I've brought the colors closer together, I'll sample an area from my cheek and make adjustments to adjust all of the similar colors. I'll shift the hue more towards red and then decrease the saturation. And I'll use the eye icon on the mask panel to toggle the visibility of the changes. In this third image, I'll select Masking again, and then select Subject, because I want to change the colors in the building, but not the sky. I'll disable the Color Overlay, then use the Point Color Eyedropper to select the blue, move the hue towards cyan, increase the saturation, and decrease the luminance. Then I'll add another color point sampler in the light orange areas, and then I can decrease the saturation, and then lighten the luminance. I'll add a final color point sample in the darker oranges, and then shift the hue towards red. And again, I'll use the eye icon to toggle the visibility of the changes. Okay, a few shortcuts before we wrap up. I'll demonstrate them in masking, but they also work when using point color as a global adjustment. When dragging to make adjustments in the larger color field, hold the shift key and drag to constrain the movement to only adjust the saturation. To constrain the movement only to adjust the hue, Use the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows and drag. To enable more precise adjustments in either of the color fields, Option drag on Mac or Alt drag on Windows. This slows the movement of the mouse so that you can select smaller increments. And you can Option drag on Mac or Alt drag on Windows any of the sliders to quickly see what areas are being affected. Now because we're in masking, Camera Raw displays the colors within the mask that are not affected in grayscale. And of course, all of these changes are completely non-destructive and can be refined at any time. I'm Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.